The Dominic Ferrioli Foundation is proud to support Headline, a multimedia project devoted to raising awareness of various public health issues. The foundation, established in 2001, supports charities throughout the Capital District with a focus on medical services. As the world continues to grapple with the COVID-19 pandemic, there's another medical crisis in New York that's continued to evolve in the background, as it has for years, and may have grown worse because of the virus. Um, the opioid crisis was in full gear, and when COVID hit, uh, we were calling the, uh, you know, a, 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 that it was a pandemic of, of addiction and, uh, and overdose deaths. Um, so, so the COVID uh, really, exacerbated in a lot of ways the, um, the uh, addiction crisis. Uh, many people who were in recovery uh, have had a real tough time uh, with the social isolation, uh, plus the stress uh, and the anxiety that people were feeling, the depression from, from the isolation. Uh, all of that led to, I think, an increase in, in a sort of self-medication. Uh, but, but for people who had uh, an active addiction, uh, it, 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 I think, really uh, created a, a much more stressful environment for people. I think as we as we kind of get out of this um, COVID-19 pandemic, it's really important for us uh, to remember that this is, in fact, a very serious issue, a serious issue that's been exacerbated by uh, the pandemic. Uh, and we need to continue to make uh, strategic investments uh, so we can uh, flatten the curve in terms of uh, the amount of overdose deaths that we're seeing. Data on the number of drug overdoses in New York from this year won't be published until sometime next year, but anecdotal evidence appears to show an increase in areas across the state during the pandemic. Part of the problem is the data is not complete. Some counties are very good at reporting, others are not. Some coroners stopped doing inquisitions because they were so swamped with COVID fatalities. Um, but what we're hearing from the counties that report and from um, our, our first responders and from the recovery community is that there's absolutely a spike that's not abating. So it's not like it was just a little blip because of the pandemic and, and now it's gone away. While news reports from different counties have shown a spike in overdose deaths at times this year, people familiar with the opioid crisis say that's been a common trend across the state. The number of deaths, you know, the number of overdose deaths has risen dramatically in communities across New York State and across the country. Uh, we've seen numerous times in the newspapers between March and now, where you might have 25 people who died in a relatively short period of time. There were a number of counties that had higher death rates from uh, the opioid overdoses and other overdoses. It wasn't just opioids, but uh, drug and alcohol related deaths, you know, where, where they exceeded, uh, you know, the COVID deaths. While it's become more and more apparent that the isolation, anxiety, and fear from COVID-19 has added to the opioid crisis this year, it's not the only way the pandemic has affected the addiction crisis here in New York. If you can remember when the hospitals were ordered to increase their capacity uh, by 50%, uh, and it was very specifically about creating the capacity to address COVID. And so one of the things that happened was if you had a detox unit or you had an inpatient rehab, what you might have done is you might have converted those beds to COVID beds. Um, and, and there are a good number of hospitals that once we got through the first wave uh, and, and some hospitals recommissioned those beds, but some did not. Um, so you had a situation where hospitals uh, were less able to serve the needs of people needing detox or needing uh, you know, inpatient rehab. And so community-based organizations really had to kind of pick up the, the, the burden of that. Uh, unfortunately, without the benefit of, of protective equipment very frequently. A lot of the service providers were not listed as essential. So they didn't get PPE. So they were not protected the way you know other health care professionals were. Not that they were all protected uh, greatly, but, you know, they didn't have access to PPE, masks, et cetera. So we, we as a state and as a nation have chronically underfunded this field of, of our, our health system, uh, behavioral health. 
and and this segment, um, substance use disorder and and mental health, did not receive any of the money from the federal government that our hospitals got. So it was a double whammy. They've lost revenue because of the inpatient facilities cannot accommodate as many people anymore. Demand is up and people have less insurance. So it's kind of a perfect storm that has come together. This statewide crisis has brought lawmakers together across party lines to support a stimulus package or relief funding to support community partners, recovering addicts, and education efforts. I mean, we have the tools, we just don't have the will. And uh, that's really what, what I'm very distraught about as the chair of the committee, because I see what a struggle it is, and I see so many people who are invested in helping others. But without the state kicking in more money and a better attitude, I don't know what's going to happen. So, for example, we did an opioid tax, a surcharge, right, that mm -hmm. distributors and manufacturers had to pay. The money from that didn't go into the treatment and uh, education sector. It went into the general fund. This is a, this is a sector of our health care system that needs to be shored up. Um, but some of the things we talked about, the waivers for telemedicine have been very, very helpful. The waivers on um, uh, medication-assisted treatment used to be you have to get a prescription in person. Now it can be done remotely. One of the things that happened when uh, we went into shutdown mode and, and clinics were no longer open, and so uh, a lot of clinics, almost all clinics, shifted very quickly to telemedicine and telehealth services. There was a much greater uh, participation by people in counseling sessions than, than you know, in, in many programs. While some silver linings have emerged from the shutdown, this is a new phase of the opioid crisis that lawmakers and advocates say can't be ignored. They say that's going to take a special focus and commitment to meet this new challenge. This is one place where I think it's critically important for us uh, to do some self-reflecting uh, and acknowledge the fact that uh, if, if we do in fact cut funding, uh, if we do in fact uh, you know, stop working uh, on all of the advancements that we've collectively made, that people will lose their lives. It's, it's, it's that simple. I mean, we wouldn't turn our back uh, on dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, we certainly shouldn't be turning our back on the work that we're doing in this space. We have to get serious about it. We have to treat it with the same level of respect for the magnitude of the problem. We've got to meet the magnitude of the problem with a solution of the same magnitude.